Today is November 9th, and Mac and football is all the way back. Super excited for it. Joining me today on the show is my good friend, Trey Tindall. You guys can call him Trey Trends. Trey, I'm going to start with you because last night was the first time, I think it's the first time we've messaged during Mac and football, and we had the same bet and watched at the same time. So I'm going to ask you a couple questions here. First off, how did Mac and football make you feel? And then second question is, how did your bets go last night? Uh, you posted a YouTube short on our YouTube channel on the Bears Profit Plays you, uh, YouTube channel, and what you said really spoke to me. You said yeah. Maction equals grit. You gotta trust your gut. And this isn't the play that we bet on together, but I I threw out a risky play yesterday. Ball State versus Toledo under forty nine and a half. You said never bet the under on Maction. I did it. I trusted my gut, and it barely hit. <laughs> <laughs> but I was happy about that. Um, you know, Maction's crazy, dude. Uh, like you told me yesterday, they could each score 40 points and the over-under will be 80, or they'll each score seven points and it'll be a dead game. Yep. But it was pretty fun to watch. Uh, I had Eastern Michigan minus six and a half. I bought a point. They lost. Uh, they lost by – or they won by six, so I lost by a half point. That was very frustrating. I was crying. And then the play that we both had was Ohio Moneyline. We didn't have to sweat that at all. Mm -hmm. uh, Rourke is a fucking dog. He, he is. And he was almost thrown for 400 yards on him, and, like, that was uh, through the first half. So I kind of felt bad uh, f uh, for Miami. But, I mean, it is what it is. Action's fun, and I'm excited to watch it again tonight. Yeah, and that Toledo game, going back to it, I'm pretty sure it was 21-0, like, early in the third. It was, it was risky there at the end for the over. I think it ended mm -hmm. at, what, 49? And yes. 49 and a half, so. Literally, it should not have hit. Um, yeah. It was stuck at 21-21 for a while. It was 14-14 at half. So I was a, a little nervous, but I trusted my gut, and the defense has stood up. Yeah, that's how my action goes. Like, anything can happen. Um, for me, though, 2-0 uh, straight betting last night, Ohio and Ball State, the plus 12. Uh, that's a 6-0 record for me straight now in my action, straight betting. Lost the uh, money line, Ball State, the big thrower out. Just a little sprinkle on the money line, but that's okay. 6 0 straight betting on uh, match and football. To me, though, Trey, match and football, it's like being tortured. But every four to five plays, the guy who's torturing you is like, all right, you, you can, you're done. You can be stopped tortured. <laughs> and then after the play happens, he's right back torturing you again. It, it's not like watching Alabama football. Anything can happen in these matching games. When watching matching football, they make more mistakes. They, you have more head scratching plays, but that that all like comes into it. And then you ask yourself, how is this kid on a D1 scholarship? You don't know. You say, I can make that 24 yard kick. It just doesn't make sense. But then, Trey, you get the match and play. Every four to five plays, you go, that's your match and moment. What just happened? And it brings you back for more match and football. It, that's, what, that's what it's all about. So watching these games and, and continuing to go through the pain every Tuesday and Wednesday night, it's all worth it for me. So. I got off track there. Let, no, I mean, <laughs> uh, I feel like I would rather watch a Maction slate than an SEC slate. I feel like they're just a lot more explosive. I mean, yeah. SEC teams are obviously more NFL talent, but, you know, no one likes watching defenses play. Right, right. Every play, every play, anything can happen in Maction. So let's get into the slate tonight. Um, uh, yeah, first game we're going to talk about uh, Northern Illinois taking on Western Michigan. Western Michigan is minus one at home. The over-under is 49 and a half. Trey, I'm going to start with you on this one. Man, this is a this is a pretty good game. Uh, both teams had pretty high expectations coming into this season. Uh, Northern Illinois won the MAC last year, yep. and they have been very bad this year. Um, but I don't think that's all their fault. Um, they're currently on their third string quarterback, so that kind of scares me. But I'm gonna throw out a couple plays for you guys tonight. Um, the first one's gonna be the over 49 and a half. Even though I did just say they're all, they that Northern Illinois is on their third string quarterback, their run game is one of the best in the country. Um, so I think that you know they don't even really need to use their quarterback. Uh, I was looking at their passing yards per game, and they are in um, the bottom quartile. Shout out Jim Irsay. Um, so I don't think that they even really need to need their starting quarterback. So I'm gonna go over 49 and a half. Um, the over is eight and two in the Huskies' last ten games overall. The over is seven and two in the Huskies' last nine road games, and the over is seven and one in Western Michigan's last eight match and night games. So I like the over four nine and a half there. Uh, it's a pretty low number. I bet the under on that number on Ball State versus Toledo. So it's kind of funny that I'm betting the over on two worse offenses, but I think that it is going to hit. And then the player prop that I'm going to have, uh, I'm looking at FanDuel. They don't have uh, player props yet, but if they do drop any, 
I'm going to take over on the Trayson Bourgeret. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. It's uh, okay. uh, over on his passing yards. Um, Northern Illinois' uh, passing defense is downright terrible. Um, mm. I'm just going to give you a couple of their pass defense rankings. And I will preface this by saying there's 131 <laughs> college teams in the FBS. 100 and, and uh, this, these are their pass defense rankings. Okay. 119th in pass play success rate. 125th in pass play explosiveness allowed. And an 88th in passing yards per game allowed at home. So their passing defense is one of the worst in the country. So I'm going to go over on the Trace and the Bourgeret, Western Michigan quarterback passing yards. Yeah, and, and I feel like Western Michigan is one of the worst offices in the conference, though. Uh, they love to run the ball with Sean Taylor. Uh, he's, he's been doing really well the last three games, 95 yards on 21 attempts uh, in the last three games. But as you said, NIU on the third-string quarterback, I think Rocky Lombardi is also out tonight uh, for the third straight game. NIU yep. has tested out a couple quarterbacks, and they both have been bad and outright losses. Um, I don't know who to pick in this game, so I'm going with my heart, and the heart says over every single time, every single day of the week. So I'm going to take team ride. over 49 and a half, team ride. Yep. Right. Yeah, and I mean, I was looking at the side, and I didn't like a side. If I were yep. to pick one, it probably would be Northern Illinois, yeah. um, even though they are on the road and on their third-string quarterback. I just like their running game, and um, I do not like um, – um, their defense, though, but I think that they should hold up enough to keep it close. Yeah, rooting for points tonight. Uh, let's keep the train moving here. Kent State traveling to take on Bowling Green. Kent State is minus 2.5 on the road. Over under is 55.5. Trey, I'm going to start with this one. I have no idea what Kent State is. I've been on Kent State. I've been a writer of Kent State all season since they uh, gave Georgia a test early. I think they lost by 15. That's Georgia Bulldogs, the number one team in the country, not Georgia, the country's football team. <laughs> they gave Georgia a run early in the season. I've been betting them since, and they continue, continue not to cover the spread. I, I, I tried to will them to a win a couple weeks ago against Ohio. I died. They revived me going into OT, and then they killed me again in overtime. I, I don't know what to do with this team. They continue I definitely to hurt remember me. that. Yeah, they, I, yeah, I messaged everybody, everybody about it. They continue to hurt me, but the, the weird thing is the more they hurt me, the more I like it. It's, it's the weirdest thing ever. I wear my heart on my sleeve with this team, and I'm going to do it again tonight. Kent State, minus two and a half, and Trey, I'm going to make this the lock of the year in matching. This is the lock of the year in matching for me, minus two and a half. If it loses, I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe someone in the comments can come up with something for me to do, but tonight, this is it for me. Kent State, minus two and a half, lock of the year. Jesse, I think we might be team riding for all these games. I'm going to go Kent State minus two and a half, too. Uh, Kent State lost last week to Ball State, so that was a little concerning. Um, But I think they are going to bounce back. Uh, Bowling Green is 0-5 ATS in their last five Wednesday night matching games. Kent State is 5-1 ATS in their last six games at Bowling Green. And the road team in this matchup is 8-2 ATS in their last games. So I'm going to go Kent State with all those trends, all the trends saying Kent State should win this game and should cover the two and a half. I'm going to hit you guys up with another player prop. I'm going to go over on Marquise Cooper's rushing yards. Mm -hmm. Um, Kent State's offense runs through Cooper. We all know that. Um, He averages almost five yards per carry. And Bowling Green gives up over 150 rushing yards per game. So I think he's going to eat in this game. Um, I'm not too worried about Bowling Green, honestly. Their their team has been very bad over the past couple of weeks. Their offense only scored nine points last week, and yep. uh, they still barely lost, so their defense did show up, but um, their offense has just looked inept. So I'm going to go Kent State minus two, uh, two and a half and over on Marquise Cooper's rushing yards. Yeah, and part of the reason I like Kent State so much is because the offense is so, is so explosive, and I don't think Bowling Green can keep up with them. I think the two and a half is a smart play here. Uh, Let's go to the last game of the show. Buffalo versus Central Michigan. Central Michigan is minus one and a half at home in this matchup. Over under is 54. Uh, Let's start with you, Trey. Um, This is this is probably the toughest game that I have to choose out of the three. Um, I was really big on Central Michigan coming into the season and Buffalo has uh, looked good throughout the season. Um, So I'm going to stay away from the uh, spread here because I feel like I would pick Central Michigan and I don't trust that. So I'm going to go over the 54 and a half here. Um, both these teams love playing on Maction uh, Wednesday nights uh, and the trends show that. The over is 5-0 and in Buffalo's last five Wednesday night Maction games and the over is 10-2 in Central, in Central Michigan's last 12 Wednesday night Maction games. So both these teams love playing in, uh, on the spotlight. Um, I think both these offenses are going to show up. 
And then for the player prop, I'm going to go over on Jace Bowers' rushing yards. Um, Buffalo has a two-quarterback system. One's a pocket passer. The other one is a runner. Uh, I'm going to go with the runner over rushing yards. They've been using him a lot over the past few weeks, and he's been producing. Uh, Last week, Bauer ran for 109 rushing yards on only 14 attempts. And Central Michigan gives up over 140 rushing yards a game. So I think he's going to eat in this game. So I'm going to go over the 54 and a half and over on Jay Spower's rushing yards. Yeah, I like the rushing yards prop. I don't know about the over owner on this one. I love Buffalo a lot. I, they are my favorite team in the action. I, I, me and my brother have said it for years. Buffalo's our team. I love them so much, Trey, that I'm not going to take them. I have no reasoning behind this pick. My gut just says Central Michigan minus one and a half. And I'll say it again. I don't bet matching games with common sense because yeah. matching games don't make any sense. So I'm going to take Central Michigan minus one and a half. Um, I, I think that's the okay play here. They're three and five. They need a couple wins to get into a bowl game. They're at home. I think they I think they can defend home field in this one. So I'm going to take Central Michigan minus the one and a half. Yeah, saying Buffalo's done a good job covering this season. They're six two and one ATS so far. Um, but with this being such a low number, it's 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 honestly basically a pick 'em. So who do you think yep. is going to win? Um, and like I said at the beginning, I've been a big Central Michigan fan. I thought their quarterback was going to dominate the MAC this year, but he really took a, a big step back so far in his progression. So I'm going to go with the over fifty four and a half there. I think he he should throw for a lot of yards tonight, but he always makes a couple boneheaded mistakes. So right. uh, I'm going to stay away from the side there. Yep. All right. With that, the show is over. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I can't wait for tonight's action uh, tonight. Please don't forget to like and subscribe on the YouTube channel if you enjoyed the content here. Uh, we also have a Twitter page and website. We would love to see you guys interact with that. Uh, the links are in the description below. Uh, and thanks again for tuning in. We will see you guys back here Friday for a live stream, 10 a.m. Uh, for our weekend picks. And uh, remember, winning games is easier with a bear on your side. See you guys later.